Welcome back guys. In this video we will be talking about C-reactive proteins or CRP. You, uh, you probably heard this name CRP test in your uh, medical reports or something like that. And this is definitely something to relate with infections and inflammation in your body. So what is C-reactive proteins and why we test C-reactive proteins during uh, the identification of any infection or the diagnosis of any infection. So if you want to know stay tuned and, and watch this video. So C-reactive protein is a protein that is found in our blood. It is present in our blood in, in very tiny amount throughout the time, uh, all the time. For example, now in my body, if you check, CRP is present in very minute amount. Now the CRP protein content goes up when any infection occurs in your body. How and why? And that's the function of CRP that it needs to tell your body immune cells which are the fighter against infection it needs to tell them that there is something wrong going on in your body someone invades in your body and causing any harm so it is telling all the cells all the immune cells like macrophages neutrophils lympho lymphocytes and all those different cells that something wrong is going on so please bring more and more soldiers to fight against the infection so the content of crp that's why important so if, if it goes up that means you have kind of infection in your body so that's that's a very important thing. Now, uh, how it uh, source uh, and how it tells your body that uh, that that something is going on, bad is going on. So so let's talk about it. CRP is a protein that is usually present. I've told you, but uh, generally it is present by liver cells. So if I draw liver cell, it is generally present by liver. That's the hepatocyte cells. So inside there are cells, different name of the cells. I'm not going to talk, talk about all those cell names, but uh, they produce this CRP. But they produce the CRP in very, very tiny amount throughout the time. Let's say very few CRP. And this, if you look at the structure of CRP proteins or C-reactive proteins, what we can find is that they are pentameric, pentameric protein. That means they have five different subunits to be attached with each other looking something like, should make it something like this. So it's a pentameric protein like that. Right? So what happens, those monomers start to build in hepatocytes and then they will be added with each other to produce a pentamer. So let's say they produce this one, this pentameric protein. So this is CRP produced by hepatocyte cells in very minute amount. But if there is any kind of infection in your body and during the infection, remember the very first stage of the reaction is uh, the direct response that is a response not humoral it's a cellular mediated immunity right so it's the direct response of cell mediated immunity and c reactive protein is 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 in uh, belonging to that cell mediated immunity portion that is a very prompt response to an infection it will not come later because in the later stage of infection is based on the humoral immunity that is by all those antibody mediated response so this belonging to the part of cell mediated response so during the cell mediated response at the very beginning the key players for fighting any kind of infections are macrophages remember macrophages macrophages are there and also other other cells are there uh, neutrophils and many other cells are there so those macrophages start to secrete or t cells are also present there the macrophages start to secrete il6 interleukin 6 interleukin 1 right beta that's a different version so these are the interleukins which are responsible to tell the liver that this is the time you need to produce more and more CRP. So once macrophage secretes IL-6 or IL-1 beta, those things go inside the hepatocyte cells. It will provide the, it will signal inside the hepatocyte cell and will tell the hepatocyte cell to produce CRP proteins in higher amounts. So the expression of CRP grow, goes very, very up. So they will start producing many more, many of this CRP proteins to fight against the situation. So CRP concentration goes up very much up. So this is CRP the concentration is now up. So once the CRP con concentration is up from the hepatocyte cells now in blood if you now check the blood what you will find the CRP protein high CRP content that means it is ready to fight against the infection. But that's not the only function of CRP to tell you that there's an infection. But there is more function that the CRP will go now and this CRP will bind with three different types of cell con components. For example, one type of components here is it can bind with the dead or dying cells. That means the cells which are apoptotic, 
I mean, they are going through apoptosis. Right? So the cells which are going through apoptosis, that means the infected cells, or already the cells are kind of destroyed, they are being, being killed by the infection. So they can sit and recognize the dead or dying cells. How? Because the CRP proteins can interact with a particular molecule onto the surface of this dead or dying cells, which are not expressed by any living cell, but only expressed by dead or dying cells. And that is called, that is called lyso phosphatidyl choline. So lysophosphatidyl choline is a particular moiety that is present and found only the apoptotizing cells or dying cells or dead cells of the immune system in our body during the infection. So they have this particular receptor out there and CRP can recognize them, CRP can adhere to them. So CRP interact with this lysophosphatidyl choline and then it will bring what we call as a complement system. Because you know complement is another thing which can fight in both the way during the cell mediated immunity as well as the humoral mediated immunity. It can actually cross talk between these two situations. So there are complement proteins in our body called C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 many proteins are there. So usually the CRP will go. So let's say this is the dying cell. Let me draw. It's a it's a sad and dying cells and in, 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 in front of the sad and dying cell there are you know in, in the top of it there are those those lysophosphatidylcholine receptor present. Now the CRP will go and CRP will bind here pentameric CRP bind with those lysophosphatidylcholine and it will recruit it will recruit the complement protein and the example of such protein in this case they recruit C1 Q this is the complement protein CRP is going to recruit so now CRQ will come say this is CRQ CRQ will be adhered will be attached with this CRP and with this lyso phosphatidylcholine but this attachment of C1Q with this complex of CRP and this lysophosphatidylcholine invites the dangerous cells of immune, immune system, the macrophages of immune system, right? So macrophage or any phagocytic cells of immune system. So those phagocytic cell will come and, and engulf those cells, engulf or kill those cells quickly so that the infection cannot spread. So that is the job of CRP in our body during the infection okay so that's the way that's the one kind of job i've told you three types of possibilities are there one is that second thing the crp can also adhere to bacterial cell with cell because in bacterial cell there are certain different moieties but still crp can detect it that makes crp very important because it's a multimeric protein it can go and adhere to this lysophosphatidylcholine which is found in the dying cell it is also found in certain bacteria cells so if you find the same thing with certain bacteria let's say this is a bacteria it's a bad drawing this is a bacteria with flagella having fun in, in, in infection body and here comes uh, the receptor onto the surface and CRP can go and bind with this receptor here CRP bind with it and then it will again bring upon the complement activation and it can destroy this bacteria. It can ultimately kill the bacteria. This is the second one. And the third thing, the CRP can also sit on to the inflammatory tissue or inflammated tissue. Inflammated tissue. Because during this whole process, inflammation will start because inflammation obviously happen in the very beginning of any infection strategy. That's the strategy of our body. So it can also sit onto the inflammated tissue and it can bring upon certain other cells of immune system and start to secrete certain chemical factors like, you know, histamine and other chemical factors like leukotriene, C4, B4 and all these things to create a huge mess 
at this particular place actually it looks like mess because it will swell up redness pain and everything is going on but your body is fighting against the infection and if you check your blood for the crp level it will be huge and very high during this response but once this response is kind of it because once the cell detect that this is a situation not to be handled only with the cell mediated response they need more responses like humoral response or antibody response then once the antibody start to produce and they will be recruited though it will take certain amount of more time because it's not prompt like the cell mediated response so once the antibody start to build and, and release in that case crp concentration slowly start to drop and they will again be very less to normal or minimal right so that is the functionality of c-reactive protein in your body so now you understand if there is the presence of high amount of c-reactive protein in your body that means an infection is going on and your body is trying to fight against it that's why they increase the amount of crp right so that is very important to understand there is any infection or not in your body so if you like the video subscribe like share the video spread the words guys because i want everybody to know about this and it's your job too right so thank you and all the best for future.